Um, I don't believe that um, failure to be, being given the opportunity to participate in the planning commission uh, could constitute a basis for uh, denial of a subdivision plan, a preliminary subdivision plan. I think the remedy, as I outlined in my opening statement, if someone believes that the planning commission erred by not allowing them to participate, their remedy is to file a petition of appeal in this board to raise whatever issue they would have raised before the planning commission. Um, connection with flooding and erosion and roads and, it's, and uh, um, bikes, come before this uh, board, raise that issue, exercise the right to participate before this board, and have your issue determined de novo by this board. That it is not a basis for the denial of an applicant's application for subdivision that the Planning Commission made an error by not permitting someone to participate. That, that's not a logical, legally sustainable reason for denying a subdivision application. I would submit that once you appeal and you exercise your right to participate before this board, it's moot as to whether you participated before the Planning Commission because this board is a higher administrative agency that can make its own decision de novo. Um, so I, I would disagree with that advice. The fact that you complain about having failed to be allowed to participate is not um, a basis for denial uh, of an application. Thank you again for your patience. So, would you agree that what the witness said would be used to determine our decision? Not the fact that they weren't allowed to speak at the Planning Commission, but if we hear things here that change it to the point where the Planning Commission probably would have denied it, that's relevant. But if we're not letting her speak to all of her issues, then we're not allowing her to speak. Oh, oh yes, Mr. Martin, let me, let me respectfully disagree, sir. Um, if someone goes before the Planning Commission, and of course there's no one we can identify that actually would fall into this category in this case, but if someone went before the Planning Commission and said, I would like to object to the roads as a public participant, and they were denied that, their remedy under the law is to file an appeal to this board and raise their issue in connection with roads, be heard publicly by this board, de novo, no deferential standard of review because you, because this board's, this board's standard of review is de novo, and that would be your remedy. The fact that you say, I, can't partic I wasn't allowed to participate does not relieve you as a petitioner of the obligation of stating your grounds for appeal in your petition and following it with this board. If, if uh, you want to complain about erosion and flooding and the measures taken to in the subdivision plan to correct erosion and flooding and the, the planning commission erroneously, contrary to the law, says sit down, we're not going to hear from you, if that were to occur, um, you could file an appeal and complain about erosion, flooding, um, stormwater management practices, uh, roads. You could file that appeal and state those issues before this board and be heard de novo. And, and I think it's, it, it's important that this board does have, this is the highest administrative body on uh, reviewing county administrative decisions and you have authority to act de novo. Uh, and that is significant authority, and frankly, that moots an issue like uh, public participation. I also believe that when this board rules that the uh, Planning Commission um, uh, is required to allow public participation, you're exactly right. But the remedy is you're going to hear from somebody when they file their petition of appeal. Um, and that may also affect, although we haven't analyzed it, that may affect the standing issue. But just because you say I wasn't allowed to be heard before the Planning Commission does not allow you to avoid the rules of this board, not raise an issue in your petition, and then come in here before this board and, and raise that issue and, and leave us completely unprepared uh, to address it. 
Mr. Chairperson, in the letter of appeal mm -hmm. on page three, yep. it's uh, articulated that at least one appellant mm -hmm. in attendance during the Planning Commission meetings of August 22nd and September 12th, 2016, with detailed knowledge of road conditions and flooding issues in the vicinity of the proposed subdivision, was ready to testify but was not permitted. So they did articulate, this is in the form of a proffer, yep. that if I had been allowed to testify, uh, I would have talked about road conditions, which are already a subject of a separate section, right. and flooding issues. So they did proffer mm -hmm. to the argument that Mr. Fisher made that they would have to say what it is they would have said if they'd been permitted. Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of at least the flooding issues, that was articulated right. in the appellant's letter on page three. Right. Uh, I, I was it the board respectfully that object to that, too. I think everyone has agreed thus far that the issues raised in the petition uh, relate to the two procedural issues, plus, plus the roads. That, I don't think stormwater management's been raised at. But there's no the board limited it, right? Did, Mr. Wolfgang, did you have input into what the subjects would be that would be talked about? Well, yeah. no, sir. Other than, other than, uh, I do. There, let me just say this. I, I'm sorry to take a little extra time to do it, but you know what council has has uh, put forward may be a more intelligent procedure, uh, but it's not what your rules are. Uh, it it sounds like a fine procedure, but it's not what your rules are. If you take a look at both paragraph five, which sets forth the power of the board, which I, I actually think that, that he is correct about having to do with the de novo power of the board, but then you combine it with paragraph 17 that talks about certain things that will trigger whether a case will be heard de novo or not. And those things that trigger specifically are whether uh, the proceeding below was conducted uh, during which all necessary evidence, whether by testimony or documentation, required to reach the decision was presented or submitted to that agency. If it was not, then you proceed de novo. And, and the definition of de novo is not de novo as to what somebody has put into an appeal, it's de novo is doing the case as if you were the planning commission. That's, that's, you won't find a different definition of that in your, in your rules, nor should you, because that's the definition of de novo. It's not de novo as to the points that have been raised. It, de novo means do it as a new, uh, not, not uh, do each individual piece the way that you want to, uh, and the triggers are clear in there. And we have established, or we're about to establish, that testimony what, and, and our evidence, which includes the, uh, the videos of the Planning Commission, clearly establishes people were not allowed to testify and therefore testimony was restricted below. Therefore, you can't do this as a non-de novo appeal because uh, the, the necessary testimony was not presented down below, and therefore this is a de novo appeal, and therefore we start over again. Mr. Chairman, if I can make a suggestion here. Mm -hmm. um, the last case where we had an appeal was uh, Guilford, right? Yes. And in Guilford, the two attorneys got together and decided what was already settled and what wasn't. And I think that might be one of the issues here is the two attorneys didn't do that. It was the board that made the, the limitation? Yeah, so, um, yeah, and let me just take a crack at this from, from my perspective here because I asked our um, our counsel to, to send that letter to, to the parties. Um, what I was attempting to reconcile from a procedural perspective is a conflict that exists between our rules of procedure and, to me, the more controlling authority, which is the zoning law, right? And the zoning law specifies that all um, hearings uh, are uh, de novo proceedings. Um, 
and our rules of procedure make a differentiation between on the record and de novo, right? Um, there's also a difference between our rules of procedure and the zoning law between uh, the description of burden of proof <laughs> and who has to, and the order of, t of, 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 of the testimony and so forth. So, uh, so what I uh, attempted to do uh, is to sort of say we are aware that this conflict exists, and this is how we are going to resolve it for the purposes of of this hearing, uh, in order to have it proceed in an orderly fashion. What um, possible remedy for this is? Uh, you know, I understand that not everyone's ready to have a full-blown case. Maybe we should postpone this, and if we're going to go de novo, uh, postpone this, reschedule it, and allow everyone to bring in all the witnesses they need. Well, I, you know, I'm uh, frankly, I'm uh, at this point speaking for myself. I'm I'm kind of persuaded that we we really should move forward based on the points that were raised by the appellant in their letter. Um, they did articulate those points that they believed an error had occurred in, and that where the planning commission made a mistake. There was no arbitrary limit placed on them. They could have said whatever they wanted to say. And I, I think that um, the advice that we got from council to limit testimony to those things uh, makes sense uh, from a you know an efficiency of, of hearing perspective. <laughs> um, and I think it also rings true with. Uh, um, the county's position that we don't have witnesses to potentially rebut everything that could come up if we don't limit it to those things. Um, so my, my belief at this point is that we should uh, proceed with testimony limited to those topics. Once we've kind of gone through the steps of our uh, process here, where we've given an opportunity to the appellant to present their case with those limitations, we've opened it up for public testimony on any topic that they cho choose to bring forward, which may not be limited to those topics of appeal, then this board can make its determination about what we want to do. And that might be to approve, it might be to deny, it might be to remand, it may be to change uh, what the Planning Commission did. It seems like one or the other is going to be at a disadvantage. Uh, either yeah. the witness can't speak to everything she wants to, or Mr. Fisher is going to be out in left field with the lack of witnesses. Yep. And but the witnesses I don't who wrote the letter click that without, you know, if everyone's up for it, just rescheduling and allow people to either bring in all the witnesses. Because I don't think it's fair for the witness not to be able to speak to everything she wanted, especially when it's already in the appeal. But we limited them from speaking to everything that was in the appeal. No, we're not. We're not. We're well, not flooding. Limited. We're not allowed to, to. They're not allowed to speak about. Absolutely, they're allowed to speak about yeah, flooding of the road. They are. That's not a concern. No, I, the erosion part of the flooding is one thing. Well, that, but that wasn't raised in, in the letter of appeal. Uh, it was, wasn't it? It was. Flooding was. They didn't mention erosion. Right. 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 Erosion per se. Whether um, one could say there's a connection. Mm -hmm. It said road and conditions flooding, and flooding issues mm -hmm. in the vicinity. Factual question to be right. determined by you all. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, um, so I think that that's a, you know, um, I, I don't think this is a, a dispositive question. <laughs> Um, so I think for the purposes of, of moving forward and uh, and and continuation, um, that I will uh, um, I will agree with the objection around the testimony related to erosion and ask the uh, appellants to limit that sort of question and answer and uh, stick to those uh, issues that were raised in the letter of appeal. Very well, sir. So. Um